Hey YouTube, how's it going? Nerdy Narwhal here, and I'm back again today with another six scale action figure review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Ku model Knight of the Spirit figure. Now this figure is based on a French knight, I do believe. Uh, you could see the motif with the fleur de lis or the uh, lily flower on the blue field background, and that is French. I do believe. I know that the fleur de lis has been used in a lot of different historical periods and dynasties and things like that. But in particular, I do believe this one is French. Um, I think that's what I read on some other forums about some folks who know a lot more about this stuff than I do. Um, and in conjunction with that, this armor doesn't necessarily come from one single historical period. It does, however, mesh things from the early 1400s through to the early 1500s. So um, these massive pauldrons here, early 1500s, I believe, and then this wooden shield would have been a bit earlier than that because there's not really much of a reason to have a wooden shield in your offhand when you are completely covered in body armor <laughs> you'd probably be using two hands on a spear or two hands on an axe or a mace or something to punch through your opponent's armor if that is the common technology being used on the battlefield at that time but anyways you know, Ku model tries, people can get on the internet and argue about historical accuracy for a long time, and I'm trying to avoid that because this is just a really cool figure. So let's hop into it with a bottom to the top, starting at those armored feet. These are, I think the feet might actually be metal, coming into the metal legs here. And then into that, see, you can hear that chinkling. All metal, it's a very heavy figure. The arms, hands, these are a soft plastic. Coming to this, which is a thinner material, up through to those really heavy pauldrons. Now the chain mail underneath the armor here is not actual metal, but the chain mail underneath the helmet absolutely is. And that's pretty cool. Now I'll bring it on back and we will dive in for a closer look at the figure. First things first, extra hands. He comes with some skin toned hands, which I'll never use. This guy is a cool, fully armored knight. That's how he's going to be in my display. Um, and for armored hands, you get one or two gripping hands on either side and two of these more relaxed hands over here. So I have one gripping hand and one relaxed hand on the figure and that works well enough for me. For accessories outside of this awesome armor and this removable, I want to say tabard, but I know it's not a tabard. Um, we'll just call it a vest or an overcoat, surcoat right now. This is removable. Um, he is fully armored underneath that. Anyways, you get this awesome spear, and it's a pretty long spear. It's <laughs> just about maxed out inside of my tiny little light box, and it has a flag on it, which beautifully matches the armor that the knight would wear. So this would be uh, his primary weapon on the battlefield. Secondarily... You have his sword here, and it looks like it's meant to be a two-handed sword, grip one, grip two. I'm not sure. It's not a historically accurate sword, but it does look absolutely awesome. And if we can come in on it a little bit closer, there is a design on the cross guard. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go. That looks pretty neat. And that just slides into one of his gripping hands here. Now I know I've said it a 
bunch of times, but my biggest pet peeve is when figures can't hold their swords tightly, and this sword is a little bit loose in that hand, which is kind of a bummer. Now, if you take it and wedge it deep into that pinky, he does hold it a bit better. However, I'm probably going to wrap the handle with a bit more cloth just to make it bigger, sit wider in that hand to give him a nice firm grip on it. And finally, his last little accessory is this faux wooden shield. And that is huh, all done up with straps in the back here, much like the Koo model Templar, or not Templar, Hospitaller Knight that I looked at not too long ago. This is not real wood. This is plastic, and that's A-OK. -okay. Um, for whatever reason, though, I find, and maybe it's because of the shape of the gauntlets, or the hands on this guy, but this fits quite tightly on this figure, much more tightly than the last one of these shields. I almost wish that the last shield I got from them had a, a regular old handle um, so that it could hold it better. But I don't even need to use the gripping hand. I can leave that hand open, slide that over like this, just sort of gently rest that one over the top of the fingers there. And there we go. He is tightly gripping that shield now uh, and it works great so i am quite happy with that because i do like firmly held accessories so let's talk about the armor real quick ku model has gone back and forth a couple of different times um, with using actual leather to hold the armor onto the figure or pleather and uh velcro sort of straps, not Velcro, but a stretchy material because it's not going to be seen underneath everything else. Um, but on this one, Ku model went all out with the leather. So you can see when I lift that there, that is leather that is holding these up onto the figure. So that's cool. Um, this is an excellent meshing of aesthetics. You have the leather being used as well as functionality whereas in the past when the leather has been used the figure felt a lot less functional um, and a figure felt more functional when they were just using the spandex sort of straps instead the jury's out on how long that stuff is going to last or if i'm going to need to at some point in time years down the road go through this and oh redo some of the strapping with a more synthetic material that'll last longer however for now it's working great and i do have a pretty favorable environment for soft goods to last a while in my collection so let's talk about the head sculpt on this guy ku models european head sculpts are I, wa I wonder if it's just an inside joke for them at this point. Because this guy has the most absurd, smarmiest little smile that I think I've ever seen come on a figure. You guys remember Ant-Man? This one's even worse. What is that? It's a not a terrible head sculpt. Like, it looks realistic. And on camera, actually, it's coming through quite good. Until you realize that all the teeth that are being shown are his bottom teeth meeting up at the lip. And I don't... <laughs> I'm not sure why Ku model doesn't just give us a, a nice stoic. But, yeah, whatever. It works for me. Let's close that down. Boop. And he is our big brawny knight again. Um... Uh, oh, another cool thing about this helmet is you can actually slide the bolts out of the top right there if you wanted to and open the visor up to the side. I haven't done that myself yet, 
and there are actually a lot of extra bolts and pieces inside of the Ku model box um, in case you lose them because they are very, very small. But that's a very functional helmet, which I really like with the leather coming down on the sides there and all these bolts holding it into place, the Basset Hound mouth. This is probably, in my opinion, one of the coolest helmets we've gotten from Ku model. And it is based on real medieval helmets, which I like. Now let's get into articulation real quick. I, this guy is very bottom heavy, which is very good. He will hold a pose. I'm going to use the display base um, for that added support just because he is heavy and I am on camera right now so it always makes the posing a little bit harder to do however the arms will still go up to 90 degrees and they will still come in front of his body very far as well the elbow bends double jointed and you can get it past 45 degree plane which is great um, the head will move left, right, up, down, whatever you need it to do. The torso is rather restricted, but that's because he is in a heavy and bulky suit of armor. The legs will go up, double jointed bend in the knees, huge range of motion, and then your standard ball jointed ankles so that you can get him flat on a plane. Let's stick this guy in a pose real quick. It's like he just raised his shield up to defend on that side, brought his sword forward. There we go, let's set it in that hand a bit better. Like that, boom. So he just blocked a cut. Bam, coming in to swing down there. It's a great figure, and it poses exceptionally well for being a huge, bulky knight in armor. Um, let's get him from the profile real quick. Some folks have complained that he looks kind of chunky, and I can see where they're coming from. The armor that they chose is rather pot-bellied, but... Not to the point of not looking like a big brawny badass, in my opinion. Um, yes, it is a bit pot-bellied, the armor. But uh, it's bulky, and some knights did cut rather slender figures. But in modern interpretations of them, they are oftentimes big and bulky and brawny looking. So I don't aesthetically mind at all what Ku model has done with their artistic license of this figure. I think he looks awesome. So anyways, that's going to about wrap this up for me. If I missed anything or you have any questions that I could answer in the comments, please feel free to get down there um, and we'll get a dialogue going. That sounds like fun. Um, the weathering on this guy it looks great the armor looks like it was hammered down paint apps are all good this is a really cool figure if you can find it for retail which i think this was what 250 or so pretty standard at this point for any figure it's another high quality ku model historical action figure to add to your collection if that's your thing um, anyways stay happy stay healthy and keep on collecting Nerdy Narwhal, signing off.